Well, this uh, magnificent sporting facility was actually built for the 2014 Commonwealth Games. What a wonderful legacy. It's used for many sporting events and, of course, the ultimate this year in badminton terms, the World Championships. Well, after that magnificent men's singles, I never expected it to be over as quickly as that. We turn our attention to mixed doubles and we've got the Olympic gold medalists here in Tantoi Ahmad and Liliana Nasir. They're up against the Hong Kong pairing of Lee Chun Hei and Chao Hoi Hua. So as far as the mixed doubles is concerned, only four different nations at quarter-final stage. Three Chinese pairs, two Indonesian pairs, two pairs from Hong Kong. And yet in the semi-finals, we've got four different nations still. And of course, in the top half of the draw, British interest with Chris and Gabby Adcock, the European champions. But we are concentrating on that lower half of the draw, and here come the Olympic champions from Indonesia. They were world champions as a combination in 2013 in Guangzhou. Well, for Hong Kong, they are guaranteed a second world championship medal. They've only won one medal in the past at the previous 22 world championships. That was in women's singles when Chinese-born Wan Chen started representing so Hong Kong and won a silver medal like in the women's uh, singles in 2007. Red, black for you. Red. Well, Liliana Nasir and Lin Dan Red. making history so. here today because Liliana. they are the Receiver. only two players in world championship Re history Receive. to have won Receive. seven medals yeah, okay. in one particular discipline at world championships. For both of those players, Lindan, of course, in the men's singles, it's a guaranteed bronze by being in the semi-final stage. But Liliana Nasir is intent on getting further than this. She's a three-time gold medalist looking to reach her fifth World Championship final. There she is. She'll turn 32 next month, born in Manado, right in the north of North Sulawesi. She has been world number one with Nova Udianto, with whom she won two world titles, 2005 in Anaheim and 2007 in Kuala Lumpur. She was also in her final with Nova Udianto in 2009. So three finals with her former partner, looking to reach a second final with Tontoi Ahmad, the 30-year-old from Banyumas, in the southwest of central Java. They have been as high as two, down five places this week to number eight. And when you look at their tournament results, they've twice been pushed the full distance. Brother and sister combination, Sam and Chloe McGee, didn't they have a good tournament? Put out seeds earlier on and then took the opening game against the Olympic champions yesterday in the quarterfinal against the number 13 seeds, Wang Yilu and Wang Dongping. They also Ready dropped the opening game. So there is the left-hander, Chao Hoi Wa, born in Hong Kong, but brought up in Canada. This is her eighth World Championships. Her first was back in 2007. For Lee Chun Hei, this is his fourth World Championship and fourth with his partner of today. They went the full distance yesterday against the All England champions, number two seeds, Liu Kai and Huang Yaxiong. Tragedy for the Olympic bronze medalist from 2012 and two-time World Championship bronze medalists in the second round, Jochen Fischer and Christina Pedersen. Jochen Fischer has broken his leg at five all in that match. So uh, this is the seventh beating between these two pairs and of the previous six, well, the Indonesians have won four of them. But the last time they met was in the group stage of this Super Series finals in Dubai two years ago. It was two straight games. It was only 30 minutes for that encounter. Diraj Gunadre of Mauritius, our umpire for this, and Jakob Sinberg of Denmark, our service judge. So can Liliana Nasir extend this incredible record at World Championships in mixed doubles. Ladies and gentlemen, 
On my right, Liliana Natsir and Tontowi Ahmad, Indonesia. And on my left, Chow Ho Hua and Lee Chun Hei Reginald, Hong Kong, China. Liliana Natsia to serve to Lee Chun Hei Reginald. Love all. Play. So the former world champions, the current Olympic champions from Indonesia, getting this match underway. And I suppose the big question mark, Steen, is the right knee of Liliana Nasir. We were watching her both at the Indonesian Open and the Australian Open, and we're very concerned about her lack of mobility. But they still managed to win in Indonesia, home soil. Exactly, and, and I'm, I'm certain that her knee is feeling better now than it did in, in Indonesia. Is it 100%? I don't think it is, um, but it might very well be enough to, one, all. to book a um, place in the final. Oh, that was going miles out. Some of the nerves, perhaps. Yeah, and there's very early sign of the lack of mobility and I don't like the fact that Liliana Nasir is not getting up. Service over, two, one. Mm, really took her time. Now that's a worrying sign if you're an Indonesian fan. She just can't put all her, her full weight on that right knee when she no. lunges. No. Of course, it's been the case for quite some time, but that really, really worrying. And um, Three, one. they've only played very little, um, Lee and, and uh, Chow, because oh. they played the Danes where Joachim Fischer, unfortunately, uh, broke his ankle. Uh, but I, I managed to see them in the match before Three. that, and I noticed that they looked much, much faster. And um, had a half an eye on their match in the quarterfinal against the Chinese second seats, where they played really well. So they've sort of oh. refound their level from when they won that uh, Australian Open in 2015. Um, Three. Yes, their only Super Series title in the Hong Kong pair. And that created a lot of expectation, and, and we haven't really heard from them since. Mm. Lee Chun Hei, of course, is a former world junior champion in the men's doubles or boys' doubles with Wu Ka Long, who reached the last 16 of the men's singles here. He won that gold medal in Chiba in 2012. Good rally. Play by Chow Hui Wan. Oh, he oh. called that as well. It's oh. long. What a rally! Well, the flat, fast exchanges. Three. Absolutely brilliant. And as you say, how she intercepted that and had it landed in, that would have been an outright winner. Although she hits the net cord so many times, I often wonder whether it really is luck. <laughs> she seems to have a magnet between the shuttle and her racket. Oof. Excellent play. I also had a chance to look a little bit on the uh, Indonesian Three. pair, and, and I mean, it really looks like uh, Tantowi Ahmad is in uh, absolutely great shape, which of course he needs to be in order to cover for him. I see it. Oh, oh it's a challenge here. I thought yeah. that was in. 
Lichol challenge called out. Yes, and they needed a, a bit of a break anyway because it had been six straight points for the Indonesian pair. Was out. Challenge unsuccessful. Line, One challenge remaining. Eight three play. Oh, oh good defense from the left handed cowboy rock. Service over, four, eight. That was a big save. Mm. Oh, oh. dear me. Apple got stuck in the strings of the racket as he played that nine. shot. Four. Strings broke. Yeah, there it is. Stuck in the strings. I, I, I don't really understand that serve. They they saw that Nasir had trouble moving to a flicker. Why not see if uh, it's consistent trouble? since his pair from Hong Kong have been in a tournament final. Last final reach they won, which was the 2015 Canada Grand Prix, 26 months ago. So it'd be a huge achievement, wouldn't it, Ava? After that time span, they were to get through to the final of the World Championships. It'd be amazing. Yeah, well played. And the key for uh, for Lee and, and Chow is to play six, uh, around Nasir, avoid her intercepting at the net, so they are able to play down below the tape to Tontowi Ahmad. Of course, the Indonesians totally the opposite. Activate Nasir at the net, use her excellent uh, vision, and then. Let uh, Ahmad uh, work really, really hard Service from above over. the tape. 11, 6, so a five point advantage for the Olympic oh. champions at the big game in the Execution by the Indonesians. 
And this is the thing. We know that 30, she is restricted in her six. mobility. Yeah. But she compensates because she reads the game so well. She, it's not luck that she just happens to be in the right place at the no. right time. No. She has this sense for where the opportunity will occur. Of course, coupled with the, oh! the knowledge of where her partner is going to attack this. Definitely some um, some um, plans for where he has to attack in, in certain situations, whether he's standing in front of the male player or the female player and so on. Yeah. Oh! 15, 6, She read that. Yeah, rare mistake for many She moved here. way uh, before uh, Charles Charles had um, seven. launched the shot. 15. <laughs> yeah, that was totally Eight. red as well. 15. That's where your partner tells you, hey, she's left handed. <laughs> oh, Nine. Fifteen. Coaches, Tim here, the head coach, overall head coach for Hong Kong. Jim Kang, the men's and mixed doubles chief. Jim Kang in the blue here. Service over 10, 16. Oh, she was absolutely waiting for this. Look at that. I don't know when you call that great anticipation or wrong choice of <laughs> shot from Ahmad. <laughs> Again, she's left handed. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, the defensive plan of. Uh, Lee Chun He is not really um, good in my opinion. He lifts high to uh, Ahmad and, and uh, tries to change the defense to attack by playing a, a short or a flat return. The short or a flat return, that's when the series, that, that's no good way to turn it around. He should at some time play a flat lift that will force uh, Ahmad to, um, to lift from the backcourt. 11, 17. It's going wide. Oh, yes. That's the right. Nice play by the Hong Kong pair. 12, In my opinion, they, they have a great chance of um, reaching the final, Li and, and Chow, because I don't think the Indonesians can withstand the Hong Kong attack. The problem is getting the attack in the first place after the service situation. Oh, 
and they're closing down this deficit. 13, 17. Three straight points, and all of a sudden it's believable, isn't it? Play. Believable. This is where we expect Nasir to play a fantastic service return if it's played short, if you serve short. Oh. There you go. So predictable. <laughs> Her brilliance once service again. Service over. 18. 14. Just held the shot and then push right at him. But have they flicked her ever since no, she almost haven't. tumbled there? No. That's beyond my um, comprehension. Yeah. Get it below the tape. Mistakes will, are going to come from Tom Tullyard. That's not his um, strong 18. point playing from below the tape. The touch, the soft touch, that's not where he's strong. He's strong in movement and his attacking game, and he can keep on attacking. Point opportunities. Service over. 16. 20. Good, Good return. Opening game 21 16 in. A little over 16 minutes for the former champions and the current Olympic champions, Ahmad and Nasir. First ever gold medal in mixed doubles in Olympic badminton competition. It was rather nice. They won it on the 17th of August. And of course, 17th of August is Indonesian Independence Day. Well, that is very worrying. We saw some very animated uh, Hong Kong coaches during the interval and 
I guess that's because they feel that this is uh, winnable as well. Here they are. Um, talking a lot to Lee chun hei and I, I think he's uh, he's affected by the uh, situation that he's the chance of uh, entering a world championship final. I think he's taking um, Love. the wrong choices the majority of the time. proves your point about when he's hitting from above the height of the tape is very very good yeah and it's the service situation that's a wrong choice because it's played to Nasir and I mean she sets the game up for Ahmad then powerful smashes that are easy to uh, defend instead of steep smashes brilliant, brilliant. Drops to Nasir so that she can turn the defense around uh, from, from Lee Chun Hei. It's not looking good for um, the Hong Kong pair. Service over. One, four. That's a pity. Service over. Five. One. So the first service error of the match. It was the second, at least. If it? it was the first, I'm not sure. Two. Five. see it to cover that flick there and that's probably going to prevent another flick in the near future seven two she was struggling to get forward had that net shot gone over yeah. She would have been in trouble. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Play the service return to Ahmad, no matter whether he's serving or Nasir is serving. Then you have a chance. If you activate Three. Nasir directly Eight. on the service return, you're in trouble. Big trouble. Tuntoi Ahmad. Five, eight. Full length dive. Players on court.
nice good judgment getting that got long. Service over nine. Five. Disappointed with herself, she doesn't miss many of those. Six, nine. Oh. Yeah, good work by the Hong Kong players. Seven. Yeah. Still hanging in there. So That's two points in it, huh? Serve is long. Yeah. Yeah, they've won six of the last seven points. Really get themselves back in this second game. Eight. Quick one. Very surprised that the umpire allows them to tell down. Potentially just one rally from the big game interval. Exactly. Gone long. And it is now the mid game interval. 11, 8, Eleven, eight, play. Much better defense from the Hong Kong pair in these flat defenses past Nasir. Trying to put pressure on the movement of Tantoe Ahmad. Getting him to play a flat smash out of position. between the legs. Service over 12, 9. It looks so easy. Eliana Nasir. That's a squandered point.
better tactics from the Hong Kong pair? No, not no? really. I don't think. I don't think they, in the long run, are going to be successful. I, I think it was nice that they uh, moved Nasir here, and one of the places that where we can see she's injured. Normally, that smash would never be killed on her if she was fully uh, fit in her legs because she's got excellent defense. Um, But basically, Nasir should only hit the shuttle in the service and the returns. All other shots should be at uh, Tontori Ahmad. Oh! Just proving a point on two counts. Excellent defense. Yeah. And don't play it 16. on her. No, and when she's fully fit, I mean, I know the Danes' game plan is to target Tontori Ahmad in the defense because he's got um, the second best defense in that uh, pair. performance so far by uh, the Indonesians. The ability to cover for uh, that limited uh, movement that Nasir clearly has. It's just amazing. Great tactical awareness and there's no one better in my opinion in, in the doubles categories than the Indonesians to sort of neutralize um, fast playing opponents uh, whether it's uh, hard smashes fast movers or they're so good at combining their skills with tactics and often very innovative tactics like uh, playing uh, spots on the court that you never focused on before um, playing 16. a racket uh, behind the uh, service line or something like that that's the indonesian trademark they're, they're so good at that yeah Losing down the deficits. Three straight points and now only three points behind. Really, really visible. But, uh, Service over. Not serious limited in her movement. 13. But you're right, Steen. I don't think it's really been exploited. No. They should have flicked every single time from zero all, all flick serve to Nasir. Great work, Palmer. Yeah. Down the line. 18, 13. Yeah. Right on the line. And after a long period of time, Lee Chung Hei was waving his racket as if he wanted to challenge, but uh, not allowed to by the umpire. points away from a second world championship final for Ahmad and Nasir as a pair. 13. Two points away from a fifth final for Liliana Nasir. Point 
Curtis. champions through to the final of the World Championships once more. Gold medalists in 2013 and they will contest another final tomorrow. Their second final as a pair and for this lady an incredible fifth World Championship final tomorrow in the mixed doubles discipline. The three-time former champion we reach the 13. final once more. 21-16, 21-13 in 35 minutes. Anis, Anis. <laughs> oh, she will go down in the history books, I'm quite sure, as one of the greatest ever mixed doubles players, Liliana Nasia. Also add to that mix that she's got a, an Olympic silver medal as well. She's incredible. But tomorrow she will play for a fourth gold. Celtic Football Club is just opposite the Emirates Arena, or should I say the Emirates Arena has been built opposite Celtic, of course, were the first British football club to win the European Cup, beating Inter Milan exactly 50 years ago. Chuck Steen, the manager then. So after our first two semi-finals, we turn our attention now to men's doubles and now that Chen Long has been beaten in the men's singles Mohamed Hassan is the only defending champion left in the tournament this year he's playing with Orian Nagun Saputra and they're up against the Japanese pair of Takeshi Kamora and Keigo Sonoda well, as far as men's doubles is concerned five different nations at quarter final stage just three different nations at semi-final because in the bottom half of the draw as you can see it's an all chinese affair incidentally the bottom pair lu cheng and zhang nang played against each other in the final of the mixed doubles at the last world championships and here they are in the semi-final of the men's doubles so here come the Indonesians and they're the Japanese pair. Well, the Indonesian pair always wear these compression stockings. Compression stockings, keeping the legs warm and the muscles warm. Well, Mohamed Hassan is